One of the keys to getting along with other believers is realizing it's not something I do or you do. It's simply about us relying on the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is the one that's going to make it possible for us to actually get along. It's God's plan and design for us to rely on the Holy Spirit. It's kind of the big issue in the book of Galatians. Are you going to try to live by your flesh or live by the Spirit? Living by the flesh is what you do when you live by law. Or you're going to operate in the freedom with which Christ has freed you. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher, and we're looking at what God's provided for us to get along. And we're in Galatians chapter 5 right now. So we're just kind of surveying through uh, some of the New Testament letters and looking at God's provisions for us as believers to get along with one another. And he says here in verse 16, I say then, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Always important to point out, he does not say here that you won't have lusts or desires or cravings from the flesh. But he says, but you're not going to perform them. You're going to be able to stop up short and say, no, I'm not going to go through that. I'm, I'm free from that in Christ. And that's what you do when you walk by the Spirit. You walk by the Spirit. That walking by the Spirit is talking about, it's a metaphor for how you live your life. But Paul tells us in Romans 8, you do it by how you frame your mind with some truth. You set your frame of mind to that. Verse 17, for the flesh desires or craves what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. And these are opposed to each other, so you cannot do the things you want. And that's exactly what Paul said in Romans chapter 7. I've got things I want to do and I don't do them. Why? Because of my own flesh, my own sin nature. And he's talking as a believer. He's talking as a believer when he says that. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit. Now that's that's how you walk by the Spirit. The Spirit leads you and you follow his lead. I know I've used this illustration before that I went backpacking a number of years ago uh, with uh, some friends and one of the men that went along had taken this route before and he knew exactly where we were going. All I had to do was follow him. I didn't have to have a map. He knew how to get us there. And in this way here, excuse me, this way here, the Holy Spirit knows exactly where we need to go and we follow his lead. He leads us to who we are in Christ. You can see that in Romans chapter 8 too. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under law. So you don't need to be under a law. You don't need a law telling you what to do if the Spirit's leading you because the Spirit's never going to go lead you to go, oh, go break a bunch of laws. It's okay. Bow down to another God. I'm going to lead you to bow to another God. I'm going to lead you to use the Lord's name in a way that's, that takes it lightly and doesn't take it seriously. I'm going to lead you to steal. I'm going to lead you to, to bear false witness against a brother, and so on and so forth. The, the Spirit, and we're not under that law, keep in mind, but I'm using that as an example. The Spirit doesn't lead us to do those things, does he? No. We're going to see that in just a second here. The works of the flesh are obvious. And he says, verse 19, sexual immorality, moral in, uh, impurity or uncleanness and promiscuity, all of which are kind of uh, considered over when we went through First Thessalonians that one of the things about getting along is not taking advantage of your brothers and sisters in Christ. And those were some of the things that Paul mentioned. And then idolatry and sorcery. And one of the things that's interesting about our idolatry and sorcery, or, or the sorcery also refers to kind of superstition related to religious things, both of these are things that frequently when Christians get involved in these things, we try to bring other believers along with us, just like under the law when, when they said, don't let, your, don't let your brother or your neighbor entice you to go off and worship other gods. We can entice the people to do this, but remember, idolatry by its nature is changed. Well, you can still bow down to a carved image, don't get me wrong. And I'm not saying you are permitted to. I'm saying people still bow down to carved images. But idolatry, largely for us, is going to be in that we look at what other people have and we crave that. We covet. And we know that from a statement Paul makes in Ephesians 5 and a statement that Paul makes over in Colossians 3. Covetousness is idolatry. So when we're looking at what everybody else has, we're thinking that thing will make my life better. And we can do that. And you know, the problem is, is when we do that, it actually then encourages other believers to do that. Learning to be content. Contentment can also be, well, let's put it this way. Idolatry is infectious in a bad way. Think about right now where I live, there are so many people that have this 
winter, we call it cold or flu bug, but it's just running through our through our community uh, right now with all of this stuff. It's infectious. Well, this and that's a negative and kind of infectious. But uh, a couple of years ago, when COVID nineteen was going around. There were so many people I watched go out of their way to be kind and helpful to other people in there that it was kindness became infectious. That's a that's a good kind of thing, isn't it? Well, this would be bad, but we want to promote those things that rather than craving what other people have, we have we do go the other way. Then we have that word that's hatred. That's a uh, it's it's uh, the idea of being an enemy. It's used by Paul in Romans chapter five that we we become enemies of God by by hostility towards Him and strife. We always want to argue with other people. Jealousy over there is actually the word zealous, which is a word meaning to be driven to win. We want to be better than everybody else. Oh, you graduated high school. Well, I went to college. Oh, you went to college. Well, I got a master's degree. Oh, you got a master's degree, so I got a PhD. I mean, that's an example. Oh. You, you don't live in a tent anymore. You live in a hut. Well, I don't live in a hut. I live in a regular house. Or you don't live in a house. I live in a bigger house. And I live in... You know, it, it does, it's all kinds of things for all kinds of people. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's a negative thing. And it creates competition in a negative way for believers. And then we have this word, outbursts of anger. Okay. And it's our word, thumos. It's that heat that builds up and... We get hot like that. How about that selfish ambition down here? We put ourselves and we pursue our own things before other people. He goes on there. Dissensions. That's where we're still trying to get along with it. We're still trying to be together with other people, but we're kind of dividing the group up. Getting loyalists to me or, or me dividing into a group of loyalists to an individual. And then we have this word that's translated factions. That's heresy. has to do with a, a group of people that hold to a particular doctrine or a doctrine that that is chosen that is contrary to what is what is supposed to be held. So it actually is kind of has a twofold uh, relationship in what goes on here. We have the word envy. That's the hurt that we feel that why did they get that? That's no fair. I should have had that thing like that. There's a well, I was going to tell a, a story when I was a kid. One of my sisters. Uh, at Christmas time, uh, my, my my cousin that was about my sister's age, and she's a, f- a few years younger than me, she got a, an easy bake oven. If you don't know what those are, don't worry about it. But it's a little kid baking oven thing, and uh, and uh, uh, actually, I think it was my cousin that did this. I think, but it was my cousin said when my sister opened it, "Whose easy bake oven is that?" See, it's hurt. We see that at a little kid level, and it's kind of oh, that's cute. Oh, that's kind of. But you know what? It happens with adults that we are envious. We feel hurt. Instead of rejoicing with those who rejoice, we're like, why did they get that and not me? That's not fair. Why? I've, you know, I as a pastor could look at at something that happens in another church and a pastor gets there and two years in, man, that his ministry is just flourishing. And I'm going, I've been here 30 years. Why don't I get that? Instead of rejoicing that, hey, God's doing something there should rejoice with that, not be envious. Drunkenness, riotous carousing, those aren't conducive to good good fellowship. There's lots of people. There are people that are called happy drunks, but I've known more people that have gotten into fights with family and friends when they're drunk or when they're kind of in wild partying situations. And all of these things, this is what your flesh does. And he's pointing all of this out because you know what? And when you're a believer and you're living by law, these are the kind of things that you're going to be surprised by because they're going to pop out of your flesh and you're going, wait a second, I'm trying to keep law. Why am I struggling with this? Because you're focusing on something God doesn't want you to focus on. You're supposed to be focusing on your freedom that you have in Christ and who you are in Christ. And in that way, then the love that you have towards other believers. Instead, you're looking down here at all these rules that you're supposed to be keeping. And having said all that then, when he gets done with this statement on, on uh, the works of the flesh, he says, but, but, it's a mild but, but nonetheless, but the fruit of or from the Spirit, it's love. It looks out for what's best for us. It's joy. It appreciates what God is doing. It, joy is not giddiness. It's not happiness. It's peace. You can be at peace, but you also can be promoting peace with other believers. It's patience. 
It's the ability not to blow your top. It's not to say, I give you a chance, I'm done. That's not patience. That's not the fruit from the Spirit. When you blow your top at other believers, you're not spiritual. You're carnal because you're losing it. Even if you don't vocally open your mouth, even if you just, in, within yourself, you're making this decision. It's kindness. You're going to do what you can to not rub people the wrong way. It's really easy. Uh, some of us have personalities that are just kind of annoying and rub people the wrong way. It's like we don't know how to function in relationships. The Spirit gives us the ability. See, these are all fruit that the Spirit gives. The Spirit gives us the ability to deal with others in a manner that puts them at ease around us rather than is always, man, that person's abrasive. Man, that person is always in your face. They're just, oh. No. Helps us learn to, to back off. Uh, respect other people's boundaries as we interact with them, believer to believer. Goodness, we actually want to look out for not just having joy, but we also want to have this goodness where we have a real sense of well-being. And we can be also promoting this with other people. Faith. Why, Nate? Why faith? Well, I always think like Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. It, Paul says over there, he says, he has his confidence that 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 the work that God's begun in you, he's going to carry it out until the day of Jesus Christ. Well, it's easy for me to look at points. Well, he's going to do that with me. But you know to stop and look at that other believer and say, you know, he's going to do that with them too. Because that's his promise. It's good for you. But it's good to also look at that with regard to other people. We come down here to to, to this word gentleness. They translated gentleness. It used to be translated meekness. But it's a word that was used to refer to strong, powerful animals. Think of a horse. And you could, instead of having a horse that just runs wildly and flays and kicks and tries to buck people off, it, it obeys its master. It obeys its rider. And it goes where its rider tells it to go. Or, or think of a dog, a very large, powerful dog that obeys its master. When it's told to sit, it sits. When it, told, it tells to come, it comes. And it doesn't then just wildly lunge at people and attack them. That's gentleness. Do we sometimes just lunge and attack at people? Yeah. And the last one, self-control. Every one of us has things that drive us at times the fruit gives us the ability to bring all that under control that we don't have to be driven. And the, we can be driven not by bad things, but we can be driven by things that get in the way. And the Spirit gives us this ability. And he says, against those things, you know, when you live by that, nobody makes a law against it. So if you're doing this, what do you need law for? Because there's, there's no law against these things. There's no law that says, hey, don't love. Don't have joy. Don't experience goodness. There isn't. There isn't laws like that. The laws that God's given us are what? He doesn't. He gives us the fruit. He tells us to walk by the Spirit, to be led by Him, and we're not under law. See, that's where, how it goes. We have only Christ's command to love one another. And that's fulfilled in part through these things. This character, pardon me, I put the wrong hand up. This character is produced by the Holy Spirit. I can't do this. I, I, I picked up a book a number of years ago, and yeah, they said God has to help you with this, but God doesn't have to help me with this. I completely need the Spirit to produce in this in me. I can't then study these and go, oh, what's it going to take for me to produce these? As though these are exercises that by a set of spiritual disciplines, I can produce this love and this joy and peace and so on and so forth. I completely need the Spirit. Because the Spirit, I can walk by the Spirit as I follow His lead to who I am in Christ. And then He down here is producing out through me this fruit. That's what I need. That's what you need to help us as believers get along. So with that, as you're thinking about this, follow the Spirit's lead so that you have a good day in the Lord. And thank you for joining me.